Louisiana. She's the exception and never the rule. She's a mystery that asks not to be solved, but simply to be experienced. Louisiana, where you can come as you are and leave different. Whether you're planning a Louisiana convention, family reunion, or a southern vacation, the Louisiana Association of Convention and Visitors Bureaus connects you to information sources throughout the state. The Louisiana Association of Convention and Visitors Bureaus. The Baton Rouge Area Convention and Visitors Bureau welcomes you and yours to Baton Rouge, Louisiana's state capital. From the old governor's mansion to fabulous dining and Zydeco dancing, Baton Rouge, authentic Louisiana at every turn. Popeye's Chicken and Biscuits, featuring Cajun-style chicken, red beans and rice, and buttermilk biscuits, all flavored by the memories and imaginations of Louisiana chefs. Popeye's Chicken and Biscuits, committed to preserving Louisiana's flavor heritage. Here in Louisiana, we have a saying, we don't eat to live, we live to eat. And y'all, that could have a double meaning. In every Bayou Village and home we visited, we found one thing to be true. Although all of our dishes taste great, they're not all good for us. So my mission today is to take our time-honored recipes and make them a little healthier for us. I'm Chef John Falls. Welcome to Louisiana Cooking with a Change of Heart. Hello, hey! How y'all doing? Nice to have you. <laughs> hello, hello, how are y'all doing? Hey, girl, nice to have you. Hey, hey how are y'all, huh? <laughs> Very, very nice. Hey, welcome to my home kitchen, y'all. It's so nice to have uh, you here today. What, what a great group I have to cook for. I love to cook for people who like to eat. And I know y'all like to eat. I've been hearing all the comments here. Y'all, let me introduce you to this wonderful lady right here, June Bro Green. And June is from home. In fact, her brother Dick is right there. How you doing, Dick? Uh, nice. nice to have y'all. Y'all all here because of this lady. She sent me a fantastic recipe for her grandmother's world-famous, world-renowned <laughs> succotash soup. I'll tell you, I tasted it. Succotash soup, y'all, and my challenge is to take that old traditional recipe and modify it just a little bit. Diet is a four-letter word in my kitchen. We don't diet here. We modify recipes just a little bit. So I went over to... Uh, uh, June's place. We actually went to a farmer's market to select all of the vegetables and she gave me a lesson in how she put it together. Y'all uh, visit with us as I relive that great memory. That was a nice day we uh, had together at the market. The diet of most rural families in Louisiana consists almost entirely of what can be raised either in the garden or in the barnyard. And if you're lucky enough to live within driving distance of the Gulf or the swamps of the Mississippi River, then you can add seafood to your pantry of raw ingredients. You know, this is another example about what I like about a market in Louisiana. Tomatoes, we have the cherries for the salads right here. You know, a, a nice little sweet cherry tomato for the salad. I think these got a pretty bad rap, too, because people think of them as a salad bar item. But these are really good little tomatoes. Absolutely. They're a little, a little hard to stuff, but people do. <laughs> yeah, they do stuff them. <laughs> However, when you live in the city like June Green does, chances are pretty good you're going to have to visit one of the many vegetable markets dotting the highways to get your fresh produce. June's grandmother, Bro, had a fantastic succotash soup recipe, and I joined her at one of these little markets to pick up the ingredients to create the dish. One thing that became apparent readily in this market is the variety of choices we had for each ingredient. Four or five different tomatoes, three or four different onions, and even the potatoes created a challenge. Y'all, how would you like to put one of these giant bakers in the oven? You better be ready to feed the family. Well, there were a few more choices to make before June and I sat to chat about the recipe. And y'all, I have to confess, I love sweet potatoes, so I bought a bushel for myself for later. Mm -hmm. June, I tell you, this is an absolutely beautiful succotash, a lot richer than normal than the normal succotash I'm, I'm used to because mine is more of a broth, but this is absolutely fantastic right here. Mm. Most of my soups can be eaten almost with a fork. Oh, is because, that right? So you oh, make yeah, them everybody nice likes, everybody likes. Well, y'all, it was a stew like succotash, plum full of all of those great market vegetables. And by the way, here's the namesake of the recipe Grandma Bro herself. Isn't she a gorgeous lady? Well, Grandma, all I have to tell you is that your granddaughter, June, she sure makes your recipe proud. It was wonderful.
Y'all, I tell you, I could have eaten that recipe with a fork. You're right, the first soup I ever ate with a fork. <laughs> it was really rich and, of course, full of fantastic vegetables. And in Louisiana, especially in your area, everybody does the Bayou Garden. So uh, I I'm sure every morning you wake up and there's baskets of uh, vegetables on the porch that somebody tried to get rid of the night before, right? Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> everybody said the worst time in Louisiana is the spring when every Cajun up and down the bayou is uh, putting that big vegetable gardens in. They have tomatoes, so they hot. They're bringing them over to somebody's house at night. Then in the morning, they wake up. There's tomatoes on their porch. They give them to somebody else. <laughs> it's like a fruit cake. When right? zucchini comes in, <laughs> duck. <laughs> duck for zucchini. Y'all, it's so nice to have you. Thank you so much. A couple of quick introductions, y'all. Oh, I tell you, my audience is packed today. I have some very, very good friends from Chattawa. Mississippi. Now, have y'all ever heard of Chattawa, Mississippi? It is gorgeous, y'all. The school sisters of Notre Dame, 370 years of service to God right in the front row here. Let's give them a hand. Huh? Wave, I want to see y'all. There you go. Huh? Uh, there are some wonderful cooks right, uh, right here, y'all. Chattawa, oh, what a beautiful uh, place uh, that is. Uh, our, our Lady of the Pines, isn't it? Is it huh? St. Mary of the Pines. Oh, excuse me, lady. I'm, I'm sure she doesn't mind me calling it our lady of the Pines. <laughs> and in the back row, way over there, I don't know how y'all got so far back, my cameraman, Rex, my lead cameraman's family, his mom is back there. Hey, how y'all wave to me back there? I see y'all wave back there. <laughs> there y'all go. And uh, who else do I have? Oh, right here at the counter, y'all. Terry and Vicky, y'all drove all the way in here. You're, you're going to be my sous chefs today. I'm going to pass food to, through the audience to y'all. You don't mind, huh? Oh, not uh, at all. Well, a couple hours drive here, I'm going to feed you well, huh? Oh, no. Got to work for you. Got to work for things here. Y'all, let me show you. Rex, you got to come over here. Y'all, I tell you, this I showed a picture of this a picture. Uh, I showed this picture just a minute ago. Grandma Bro, what a gorgeous uh, lady! Now, uh, y'all lived, you, and you lived with Grandma Bro most of your young life, right? Uh, both of you, because your mother and I have a picture of her right here. And what a gorgeous lady, Rex! You have to get this. I think she's just uh, beautiful. Now, this was uh, your your mother. And she died when Dick was two days after. Two, two days, days after old, and then born. Grandma Bro, yeah. uh, y'all moved into her home, and she shared all of her great recipes. And this is one. Uh, boy, isn't that nice? And uh, I mean, families helping families uh, in the world when they're needed. So, and thank God she shared that great recipe with you too. Now, what do you put in your succotash? Let's start with a couple of vegetables here. What do you put in your? Well, rest? of course, fresh corn. Oh, you got to have fresh I corn. Fresh corn. Yeah. I use fresh tomatoes when I can get them. Yeah and uh, lots of onions yeah. and some garlic and uh, broth. Well, okay, so that's, that's pretty good. A couple of vegetables, y'all. A couple <laughs> of vegetables, good corn, gotta have it. Let me show you what I put in mine. Because, I know you put a little lima beans in yours too, <laughs> but y'all, let me tell you, when I'm modifying fat and I'm taking a lot of fat out of a dish, I have to boost up all of the great things, y'all. So take a look here in this platter. Isn't this gorgeous? Green beans, white beans, sweet potatoes, y'all, I put in mine. Little tiny peas. Oh, there's my corn right here, June. There's my corn. Okra, black-eyed peas. There's my lima beans right here. Now, I even have meliton or chayote squash, Rex. This is the great uh, squash of Louisiana that came here with the Spanish many years ago. Uh, red beans and white beans. We have to have red beans and white beans in a Louisiana succotash, as well as, of course, the zucchini and yellow squash. So you can see I have a lot of great vegetables, so I'm going to move this right over here. Oh, mwah. oh that's a beautiful. Now I'm going to start putting mine uh, together here. I have my good old cast iron pot. Now I'm going to start by adding just a little olive oil. Olive oil, just a couple, because you know, vegetables and olive oil, very Mediterranean, about, oh, let's say three tablespoons of olive oil, huh? Okay. Just a little bit. Now, I like meat in my succotash, so I'm using a lean turkey, y'all, lean turkey ham. I could use lean turkey sausage. Normally, I would put fat smoked sausage. Oh, I'd put that ham with that big ring of fat around the outside. I love that. Oh, I love it, huh? But it can't go into this soup. I have to modify it. But I love the flavor of the smoke, so I want to put the smoky ham, even though it's turkey, in here. Now, Rex, you ready for this? Onions. A lot of good onions in there. Oh, 
But I tell you, your mom must be some proud of you carrying that heavy camera. Show them how you store my pot there, Rex, with the camera. Look, Rex stores the pot with the camera. See that? Oh, I tell you, he's a good. What a chef this guy is. Now, I'm adding the uh, onion, celery, now the colored bell peppers. Because again, in a succotash, since it's a main meal soup, or a vegetable stew almost, as I would call it, the more of these beautiful vegetables you put in the pot, obviously the prettier it's gonna be and it's not adding any sodium or fat to the dish. Look how gorgeous that is. Oh, these old pots cook, y'all. Can you hear that sizzle? Oh, I tell you, beautiful sizzle here, y'all. And by putting two tablespoons of, uh, of uh, olive oil in here, putting the lean ham instead of bacon, and of course the defatted stock I'm gonna put in here in a minute, 50%, y'all, 50% of the fat has been reduced out of this dish. Oh, it smells great. Now, a little garlic. Y'all like garlic? Yeah. Sisters, come on. Do you like garlic, huh? Yeah. I'll tell you what, there it is. One for, there's eight of you. One, two, three, four, five, six. One for each of you. There you go. I like a lot of garlic myself, huh? Thank you. So I'm going to stir that around a little bit. Oh, i tell you, we, I wish y'all could be over this pot like uh, uh, Rex and I. It's just fantastic up here. Now, another thing. You cook yours down until it's nice and almost eat it with a fork. Well, I'm going to put just a little flour in mine. I'm going to make just a little light roux, not too much. Not the dark brown roux of Louisiana that uses a lot of fat and flour. Just enough flour. Rex, let me put a little bit more in there. There you go, just like that. I want to put just enough flour in here to pick up that little bit olive oil that's in the bottom of the... Uh, uh, of the uh, pot. You see that? See how clean the bottom of that pot is, y'all? No fat at all. It's really nice and clean in the bottom of this. Oh, I'll tell you. Beautiful. Now, tomatoes. Your, your succotash has a nice red look to it. Oh, yeah. So I'm going to add the fresh Creole tomatoes. Look at that color right there, y'all. Beautiful color. Mm -hmm. I'm going to add some great tomato sauce. Oh, and look, and I'm using a low-sodium tomato sauce and a low-sodium stock, so I'm cutting out the sodium by 37% in this dish as well. So not only a lot of fat, but a lot of sodium out of this recipe, too. Now you see that nice, gorgeous color there? Now, Rex, for the stock, oh, I tell you, let me show you my stock, Rex, in that pot behind you here. I have a, uh, watch out, are you trying to jump in my pot before I get in the pot, Rex? Look at this, y'all, a corn cob stock. Now, you know the gorgeous milk and the sweetness of the corn that's in the cob? If you boil the cob in a little defatted stock, the stock's going to take on the flavor of that beautiful corn. I've also put in here garlic and celery and carrots. So, Rex, now I just need to get in here with a little strainer. And look at here. Now I have a stock instead of water that is exploding with flavor here, y'all. Just exploding with flavor. Is this the way y'all do it over at uh, Chattawan? Huh? Y'all do it just like this at Chattawa, right? Huh? I tell you what, if they don't do it this way at Chattawa, I'm coming to Chattawa to do this, huh? Uh, this is really, uh, really gorgeous here. Now I'm going to stir this around, and what's going to happen here, June, the flour will start to thicken this stock just beautifully, and what you're going to do is have a nice, what's going to happen, you're going to have a nice, slightly thickened broth here. Now I'm going to go in with the vegetables. You ready for this? Oh, I tell you. Now, remember, the stock is full flavored and cooked. The vegetables here, I'm using uh, uh, vegetables that are in some uh, cases cooked, some cases canned. You can use all canned vegetables if you want. Just get those in low sodium. The black-eyed peas, the green beans, I'm putting them all in there. The potatoes, oh, yeah, I know what you mean. Uh, I know what y'all talking about. Look at your corn. Look, okra, corn and okra. I'll tell you one thing. This is a soup that, um, this is a soup that no matter what you do, this, the, look at the amount of vegetables. The amount of, this is what mom had in mind when she said vegetable soup, y'all. Take a look at that. Now, you think you can eat this with a uh, spoon or with a fork? I bet you can. I would let this come to a boil. Of course, you can add more stock, y'all. Just add the stock as needed. And then I'm going to add a little pepper. How much pepper should I put in here? Huh? Yeah. The taste, right? The taste, huh? The taste, right there. Now, while I'm, uh, and yeah, about that much. Salt substitute, y'all. 
I use salt substitute, but just enough to flavor it, and then right before I go to the table with it, I add a little more to it, because all of this stock is going to be so full flavored, it's just going to be beautiful. Now, Rex, I would let this cook right here for about, oh, I'd say 20 minutes, for all of these flavors to come together, maybe a little bit longer if I'm using all fresh vegetables and not uh, as many canned, to get all of these things to marry well together. And I want to show you what it looks like when it's done over here. I'm going to move this out of the way. And uh, y'all take a look at my little uh, pot here. Oh, I tell you, I got to get me a bowl. I'm going to take this and stir it around. Now you notice how the roux has kind of thickened it a little bit after it cooked the potatoes are breaking down a little bit. There you go, Rex. I'm going to put a little bit here in the bowl and I'm going to give this to June so she can taste it. And oh uh, yeah, come on, Rex. Come on, Rex. Come on, Rex. There you go, right there. There you go, right there. You taste that and let me know what you think. And look, I'm gonna do one more quick little bowl right here. And this one's for you right here. And then you can turn around and and you don't mind passing some back. Huh? Okay, I'm gonna give you this. I'm gonna give you a few bowls, and y'all can pass that back and see it. Now don't y'all hog that over there now, huh? Now, look at here, Rex, in this pot, in this pot, this is the one right here from June. Let me, let me see if I can get you a ladle in here. Oh, look at that soup right there. That's a succotair soup. Right there, see how gorgeous that is with the ham and the meat in there and all, oh, it's just beautiful. That's a gorgeous soup. How does that taste over there? Not, not quite as much tomato as yours, right? Not quite as much tomato as yours, but pretty good stuff, huh? Yeah, especially that you didn't, well, you've already, you've cooked that before. Yeah, I've really cooked that for a little while there. And, uh, but you can see that the flavors are marrying well together. And, and what I like about this succotash soup, y'all, you can use uh, the canned vegetables if you want to do it really fast, okay? Now, y'all, the second dish. No, no, you can eat that right there. <laughs> or, oh, uh, sisters, I have to tell you this. I have to tell you this. You see this rolling pen right here, Rex? You get this rolling pin right here because this is special. This is special right here. Y'all see this? This rolling pin was created in New Orleans in the mid 1700s for the Ursuline nuns for the convent there. I can only imagine how many biscuits were rolled <laughs> in that convent in New Orleans with this. I actually was lucky enough to get the rolling pin and the bread bowl that was used. Now this right here is one of the French bread molds. Take a look at this, Rex. This is one of the gorgeous French bread molds that the French bread would be laid on just like that when it went into the oven from the Ursuline nuns as well in New Orleans. So I have the bowl and the, all of these great things. Isn't that nice? Y'all cannot have it. Huh? Yeah, there you go, hold it. <laughs> I'm gonna take it right there. Okay, y'all, the next thing, y'all ready for, oh, I tell you, wait till you see this next dish, y'all, Rex. Take a look at this platter. Take a look at here, y'all. We love to stuff fish in Louisiana, and we can stuff the beautiful red snappers. We love to stuff flounder. Look at that flounder right there, Rex. See this, it's about a 10 pound flounder, the best fish I think in the Gulf. And then of course, this is the one I'm gonna stuff. That's about a five pound fish right here. And what's important about this flounder, the texture of the meat is great, but y'all, it is what I'm gonna put in it to stuff it that's gonna make it very special. So I'm gonna put this in. Come over here, Rex, we're gonna start to cook this magnificent stuffing here. Now let me show you what we're putting in it. You better come take a look at this too. Look at the crab meats I have here. I'm gonna make my stuffing with claw crab meat, jumbo lump crab meat, the pearls of the bayou, I call it, as well as my gorgeous shrimp. All of this will go into the seafood stuffing I'm gonna put into the flounder. So Rex, let's go ahead and jump in my black iron pot here. Now this pot has a little light margarine in it right here. This is light margarine. And the light margarine is 50%, uh, I always tell people 50% water is just emulsified into margarine to create light margarine. So when you put it in the pot, 50% of the water shoots right out of the pot as, uh, as you put it in. So you have to throw your vegetables in right away. So Rex, I'm gonna start again with my onions right there, my celery and bell pepper. We always begin our dishes the same way in Louisiana. Onion, celery, bell pepper, and when modifying fat, again, you pile on the good things. You see I'm putting all of these gorgeous 
colored peppers in my cooking. Again, garlic. Oh, you cannot cook in Louisiana. Every culture uses garlic. We just use more of it than anybody else, I think. Oh, yeah. Hey. Oh, yeah. I tell you what, you forget that you're cooking a little fat with this. Uh, <laughs> and look how beautiful. I mean, this is almost like a confetti, y'all. It's a gorgeous confetti of colors. And again, when people eat this kind of food with these gorgeous colors, they immediately think the best of the food. They don't, I would never invite people home and say, y'all, come on, we're going to eat low fat tonight. <laughs> come on, y'all, we're going to have a great low fat meal. No, we're not going to do that. We're going to pile on all the good stuff, reduce some of the things that's not so good, and we're going to go from there. Okay, a little herbs, Rex. Rex and I love basil, thyme, and tarragon. Basil, thyme, and tarragon in our stuffings. And we're going to saute that around as well. And once our vegetables are wilted, remember, you don't have to cook them all the way because we're going to put them in the oven again. Now, the light margarine, I'm putting a little egg substitute in here, y'all, so my flounder will be 70% less fat in the finished preparation. Now, with that being done, Rex, look at here. I always begin in my pot with the half of the shrimp and half of the claw crab meat. And I'll stir this in really nicely into the dish, just like that. And I would let this cook. I call this sacrificing. I sacrifice all of this wonderful seafood here to the flavor of the stuffing. And then, it, let's say it cooked for about 15 minutes here. Then, Rex, if you back up, I'm going to show you what I do. I put the rest in. I don't want you backing up that far, Rex. Huh? A little bit of the uh, shrimp. And then, of course, the jumbo lump crab. Take a look at that. Oh. Oh, oh, uh, isn't that gorgeous, y'all? Now, all of that jumbo lump will start to cook very, very quickly here. And I'm going to stir. I try not to break the stuffing up. I just kind of stir it beautifully like that, just kind of get all those flavors together. And the stuffing will go right into the center of the flounder. Now, to finish it, I would add some egg substitute, y'all, egg white with yellow food color. Now, you have to add it in. It holds together just like egg yolk. Egg yolk is five grams of fat per egg. This has no grams of fat. But yet, it'll do the same thing. It'll hold the stuffing together. And then, of course, I'll finish with breadcrumbs. And not too much breadcrumbs. I like my stuffing to have a lot of crab meat and shrimp. I don't want a lot of bread in my stuffing. And then, of course, I'd season it the same way. A little salt, a little pepper, a little whatever you want into it, and it's going to be good. Now, you have to let this cool before you... You can make crab cakes with this, too, right now, y'all. Stuff crab with it if you wanted to. Now, Rex, let me show you. I have one already done. I'm going to bring my flounder here. Oh, y'all, take a look at my flounder here. And I have some of my stuffing already done here. So I'm going to take the stuffing. I'm going to go into the center. I've cut a little pocket here, Rex. A little pepper, a little salt, a little granulated garlic. I'm going to put the stuffing right down into the center. Oh, this flounder loves this, y'all. <laughs> huh? Now, once it's stuffed like that, I would add a little buttery flavored oil right on top of it, just a little touch, about two tablespoons. And modifying, you just cut back. You don't necessarily take everything out. A little wine on top of it, a 350-degree oven, y'all. Throw some herbs on top of it. And when it comes out, look what it looks like over there, Rex. Oh, Y'all, again, the little uh, uh, margarine that I put in it, egg substitute, 70% less fat, 62% less sodium, and I'm going to add a little marinara sauce. And this marinara, this rich tomato sauce, is from a wonderful friend of mine, Guy Marinara. I'm using a little olive oil and defatted stock for about an 87% less fat and sodium in that. Oh, I wish you could just jump right down in that flounder. I wish I could. A couple of things that go with it, y'all. The mocha, this is a mocha pie. Oh, you were so good to bring this with you. Now, you said this is a chocolate custard, and you put a couple of wonderful little things in here. Now, this is full of fat, but I'm going to tell me what else goes in here quickly. Um, marshmallows. Marshmallows. Toasted pecan. Oh, toasted pecan, uh, marshmallows, and whipping chocolate, cream. And butter, whipped cream. Whipped cream. <laughs> oh, is it great? And then look, at, look right here, y'all, this fantastic pasta salad, light mayonnaise, fat-free cheddar cheese, egg white, y'all. 73 less percent less fat in that pasta salad. It's delicious. Who says mama's cooking can't be healthy? That's what I want to know. Huh? Who? Nobody. Huh?
<laughs> All right, y'all, I'm going to serve every one of you a dish of a succotash, and you can have a bowl of each if you want to because you've been great. Thank you so much. Hey, thank y'all. Thank you. Louisiana. She's the exception and never the rule. She's a mystery that asks not to be solved, but simply to be experienced. Louisiana, Louisiana where you can come as you are and leave different. Whether you're planning a Louisiana convention, family reunion, or a southern vacation, the Louisiana Association of Convention and Visitors Bureaus connects you to information sources throughout the state. The Louisiana Association of Convention and Visitors Bureaus. The Baton Rouge Area Convention and Visitors Bureau welcomes you and yours to Baton Rouge, Louisiana's state capital. From the old governor's mansion to fabulous dining and Zydeco dancing, Baton Rouge, authentic Louisiana at every turn. Popeye's Chicken and Biscuits, featuring Cajun-style chicken, red beans and rice, and buttermilk biscuits, all flavored by the memories and imaginations of Louisiana chefs. Popeye's Chicken and Biscuits, committed to preserving Louisiana's flavor heritage. Something old and something new. Louisiana Cooking with a Change of Heart is available for $29.95. This companion book to the television series features over 150 recipes. To order, please call 1-800-973-7246 or send check or money order to the address shown on your screen. A Taste of Louisiana. Louisiana Cooking with a Change of Heart is available for $19.95. This VHS video contains one episode of Chef John Fultz's new television series. Please send check or money order to the address on your screen and mention the show number with your order.